this is actually a better bite um, for racialized youth. I'm actually going to start using the term racialized because um, ethnocultural, it's one of those big broad terms, but the reality is a lot of the um, issues around representation also include um, the Aboriginal community and we're also a racialized community. So I'm interested in what advice um, those of you on the panel would give for um, both Aboriginal and ethnocultural youth who are interested in pursuing careers in media. Um, because, you know, there is maybe some of the issues around whether there's barriers in terms of getting into those careers with, um, and who's creating those barriers, whether it's our own communities or whether it's, it's these, um, these organizations. But definitely, I'm, I'm, I'd like to hear the advice maybe for those who want to hear it. Uh, not very long ago, I was one of those youth, you know, so, um, but getting into the media is, you know, it's like, it's a public service, it's like becoming a doctor or a teacher, so if you want to do it, you do it, uh, you know, there's no one with, there's no militia men standing at, you know, the gates of CTV saying, can't come in, um, you can, so, so, you know, um, I think it just takes, like anything, uh, work hard and, and really study uh, what it is that you like about it. There's so many avenues in media. Um, and when you were talking about uh, social media, you know, like you can pick up a camera and do it tomorrow if you want to. You can pick up a, a, a keyboard or a laptop or, and, and, and start writing a blog. It, it doesn't matter. Um, you can do it today. You can do it right now. So, uh, you know, media is one of those great things that it's, you can do it. Yes, we can. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to add. Okay, I'm going to add to that that you know, if yeah, you just go do it. I didn't think I would be hosting a show that I feel is hopefully bridging you know mainstream culture to a whole lot of other folks in our local community. But here I am. I wrote a proposal, and you know what? They could have said no. And you know what, then I would have looked at the proposal and maybe asked them more questions and thought, okay, what can I do better? What do I need to shift here? I say it's all feedback, right? It's not failure, it's all feedback. So what you do is if, you, if you're passionate about something and you feel that you have a message to share, you get out there and you find a way. Um, and there are going to be hopefully all types of people and, and structures to support you and obviously this forum is one of them. Uh, and, 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 the other thing I would say is that, you know what, you got to believe in your own potential. I know that sounds silly, but the reality is no one else out there is going to believe in your potential if you first don't believe in your own potential. So go out there and keep knocking on doors and do what you need to do. Um, and I'm going to use an example of, of you know, um, a, an interview that I filmed last week, and it was with um, Alison Fisher, who is the executive director of Wabano, and she was raised on Manitoulin Island um, uh, um, on a reserve in the 1960s, um, you know, from a nation, a very proud nation of Aboriginal people. And I'm interviewing her, and I'm an immigrant woman who was raised in Vancouver in the 1960s. Um, both marginalized groups, talked to women, um, talking about leadership, their leadership journey, and about how they can be change agents in their community. I'm not quite sure at what other moment in time something like that would be aired in the fall on Rogers Television with a whole lot of people um, watching. So I think it's pretty incredible, and I think there's lots of opportunity. Obviously, lots of things to still you know, work around and break through silos, but you know, we just keep nudging away at it, and that's how you just keep, you know, spreading that network. Um, so yeah, go for it. Well, I don't have that, the recipe of, uh, of uh, like, um, for Benji, of course, but uh, uh, if someone, uh, I think, has a passion of, of working in, in the field of media, I think they can uh, just, you know, um, work with, even if the time is very high, uh, you should have, of course, if you have, if you want to work, mind you, you have to have a good GPA so you can get a good <laughs> school of journalism, so you can get, uh, you know, to start with, you know, a good academic background that would certainly put you on the first track of working in any media institution, be it uh, like giant media, mainstream, like CTV or CBC or uh, Ottawa Citizen or any like this big, or you can think small. What about diasporic small community media that these kind of uh, newspapers that it is, uh, they are distributed in local grocery store. I always go to the Lebanese uh, store where I can go buy my halal meat. 
and uh, I grabbed lots of you know uh, free uh, newspaper, and they are fantastic. They have political reviews, economic review, and also and community announcement, and so on. And some of them are written by freelancers. They are not professional per se, but they have a passion about you know representing community, bridging the homeland to the new land in Canada, and so on. And also bringing the idea of second generation, second generation of Canadian. They are trying to construct their identity by struggling to you know uh, learn the language of their moms and dad and stick with their religion and and faith and and so on on the and culture on the one hand yet they have to go with the mainstream uh, Canadian culture and I think this balance is is very much tackled with the new trend of uh, electronic media diaspora community newspapers that is distributed for free and it's they are very very popular and very very uh, powerful so I think these are like good two routes uh, that we're starting with yeah for sure um, if you have a message uh, there are many ways to share it these days um, you know whether it be uh, through social media or um, you know, as just mentioned there, you know, through through small uh, papers, uh, you know, there there are many ways to share your message. Um, in terms of sharing your message and getting paid, I'm, I'm going to give paint a realistic picture. Um, it's uh, you know, there the spots are few and far between. Um, turnover is not. Uh, it might be high in, in smaller places. Like uh, you know, I, I started in in a. In a, in a city of 25,000 people, Lloydminster on the Saskatchewan Alberta border, um, because you have to do that. Like if you're passionate, if you if you're passionate about being a member of the media, you do have to work hard. And uh, um, you know, my parents certainly didn't. This wasn't exactly a number one on their list of careers for me because I'm not a doctor. But uh, but you know, I think that uh, I've won them over in the past uh, in the past decade, you know, after going to school and uh, um, really working my way up. Um, anyway, so I, I, I'm not trying to be negative, I just want anyone to know that if you're getting into this, first of all, if you're getting into it for the money, you're going to be waiting for a while. Um, but uh, second of all, if you do want to work for, you know, more of the bigger, you know, organizations in mainstream media, it, it does take a lot of passion and it does take a lot of work and it takes a lot of patience. But uh, but perseverance will pay off. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, of what you want to put into it.